Welcome back to the Good Morning Niger Share. Today is June 19th, a day set aside to celebrate sickle cell around the world or to recognize sickle cell around the world. Now, there are people living with sickle cell disease who are thriving. And what can we do to make life better for them? What can we do? How can we create awareness about living with sickle cell and also in terms of preventing incidences of uh, living with sickle cell disease? Today, joining us to talk about World Sickle Cell Day is Oyesha Laoni, who is a sickle cell warrior and advocate. Thank you so much for joining us, Oyesha La. Thank you, Olive. Thank you for having me. Yes, and happy World Sickle Cell Day. Thank you. Now, let's talk about, you know, you, you've always been very, you're, you're an advocate, you're a warrior. You've always shared your story. Um, I've spoken with you before. I spoke with you two years ago, and we talked about it. And last it. year as well. Last year as well. Yes, yes, exactly. We spoke with you last year as well. So you talk about this, and you've always shared your story so passionately. At what point did you realize that it was important to share your story? And at what point did you start this advocacy? Um, okay, so um, I stopped working in the 9 to 5 in 2015. So 2016, I was, you know, I was doing my own thing, but I just thought, instead, aside from my business, what else can I do? And then I came across the Sickle Cell Aid Foundation page on Instagram. And then I decided to, to join them to volunteer because when I was growing up, you know, um, we didn't have anybody speaking openly about living with sickle cell. It was just the odd neighbor or somebody down the street that my mom knew or that she would say, oh, look at that person. So we didn't have people we could look up to like mentors that were well known, that were speaking openly. So I decided, you know what? And I then, what, what, what particular, one particular incident changed my mind. I went to the hospital for a scan in Luth and I was waiting to be called. And I, the lady sitting beside me, we started talking. And I'm very open and I told her I have sickle cell and she was like, you have sickle cell, are you serious? That she has a daughter with sickle cell and we spoke and then when we finished, she said, wow, I'm so happy I met you. Now I know that there is hope for my daughter. And I said, why would you think there's no hope for your daughter, you know? And then I just felt there were people that didn't have somebody they could look up to like um, a motivation, you know? And I just felt it was time to speak openly about it and touch, even if it's just one person, I'm happy with it. Well done. And you are doing that. You've been speaking about this, enlightening and encouraging, and just basically shining more light on living with sickle cell disease. Let's talk about it in practical terms. What does living in sick with sickle cell disease mean for you? Uh, simply means that you've been born with um, two S genes. It's when a child takes one S from the father, one S from the mother. It's um, an inherited blood disorder. Uh, you're born with it. Um, you cannot pass it on per se to your children. It's not a communicable disease. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, but living with sickle cell, it means that um, there's going to be a lot of hospitalization in the in the child's um, future, a lot of uh, medical procedures, a lot of tests, um, a lot of hospital visits. But the truth is that as gloomy as it sounds, you can't survive with sickle cell. You can't manage the condition. You can't do well despite living with it. So it just means being able to manage yourself. Yes, the pains will come, the crisis will come, one or two complications will come that you need to manage. But the message we are trying to focus on is that there is hope. It is not the end of the world. Indeed, indeed, there is hope. Um, uh, let, before we go into, I'd, I'd like to talk about um, a day in the life of one who has a crisis as well as the hope. So let's see life from both ends let's see the challenges as well as the way out but before then let's talk about the work that you your team does at sickle cell aid foundation tell us about it um sickle cell aid foundation is a non-governmental organization that is focused on sickle cell um, warriors and sickle cell disease um it started about 10 years ago in um abuja and um, over the last 10 years we've been able to reach um, a lot of warriors um we call people that live with sickle cell, we call them warriors, because yes, it did, it's a battle. Um, SCAP does a lot of advocacy, a lot of awareness. We just finished um, the COVID palliatives. Um, we sent a lot of boxes of food and medication to different um, states, to different um, warriors that were on our database, you know. 
just to support them during the COVID pandemic so that, you know, just um, they're not going as often and we give them some food stuff to support. Um, we also pay for medical bills of our beneficiaries. Um, we give free um, medicine. We pay for surgeries. So we support in every aspect you can think of. Uh, we also have a network. We have um, a, um, emotional um, support as well. So we're a community, we're a network. You can come to the group and say, oh, I'm not feeling well today. And you have somebody that would uplift your spirit. You have somebody that would um, tell you, don't worry, can you try this and this? So we do a lot of things in, in SCAP. We just finished um, about four days of um, a webinar um, webinars celebrating the World Sickle Cell Day. We had talks on um, COVID and sickle cell. We had um, a talk on retinopathy, which is a condition that affects the eyes if you live with sickle cell. And we're, we're rounding up with the cook off which is a competition that is holding on now. It's just for people to show a healthy meal, and then we're going to pick a winner on um, on social media. So we do a lot of things. We do the this year we couldn't participate in the red umbrella work because there was no red umbrella work because of the um, COVID. COVID. But other years we've done red umbrella work. We do blood drives to our sister, um, um Ama else. We do a lot of things in SCAP basically. Okay, now let's talk about um, living with living through COVID-19 now, what does it feel like as a warrior? You're, this is COVID-19, this is pandemic, and then they're saying people are getting sick, and there's also the fears of oh, underlying health conditions. Does sickle cell cons uh, constitute an underlying health condition, and what does it feel like, if yes? Yes, sickle cell is an underlying condition. Um, so if you live in sickle cell, you're one of the people that is told to shield, to isolate. Um, it's just because um, if you live with sickle cell, most people that live with sickle cell have no spleen because either they've been damaged or they've been taken out because they was infected. That's the spleen. So it's the spleen that helps us to fight infection. So we are more prone to infection. So if there's a pandemic, for instance, and we are just carrying on going out, you know, it, it's, we may be able to catch it more easily because our immunity is lower than the normal person or the average person. So um, that's why we say if you're living with sickle cell, you have to be careful. And um, COVID affects the lungs. And um, there are some issues, complications of sickle cell that also affects the lungs. Things like pneumonia, um, acute chest syndrome that can lead to respiratory depression. So if you have COVID, it could make such issues worse. So that's why we advise living with sickle cell, stay at home as much as you can so you do not pick up the virus out there. And how has it been? It's been tough. Um, because if you truly are to obey all the rules, you should be shielding. You shouldn't be going out except it's to the hospital and it is extremely important. Other than that, you should be staying at home. And at the same time, the people living with you also have to be very careful True. because it won't be good if you're shielding and then your, your family member now goes out and brings COVID to you. So it doesn't only affect the warrior, it also affects the family members and the support system. Thank you for mentioning that, so that if there are family members who have someone living, uh, who have warriors with them, they, they would ensure that now, if they were not being careful, they would ensure that going forward, they'll be more careful. What is life like? What is a crisis like? Help us understand. Uh, what is a crisis like? Um... An intense pain. Oh, there are different types of crisis. Let me just say that to you, but I won't go into the details, you know. But um, the most common one is the vaso occlusive crisis, which in layman's language simply means the bone, the pain crisis, you know. Um, I could just be talking with you walking down the road, and maybe it's just an intense pain. It could be back um, down my spine, it could be my leg, you know. And sometimes it does escalate really quickly. Um, before you know what is happening, you may be in tears. You may be weeping, you may be asking for someone to help you rub the affected place, maybe your back, maybe your leg, you may be saying, where's my balm, where's my uh, mental balm, can you help me with it? Of course, you need medication. So there are some times that you feel the pain coming, and then you take your um, your tablets. Every warrior has some routine painkillers that they have with them. But there are some cases that you yourself, you know that this one, the way I can feel it, is not something that can be handled at home. The pain is intense. Sometimes if it's in your chest, that's when I get very worried because it can affect your breathing. And because the chest is not something you can physically see or touch or look at with the, with the, with the eyes, you may need to go to hospital because then it could be something involving your lungs and so many other complicated things. So most of the time you have crises that you can manage at home, but sometimes the pain is so intense that you feel like if you don't get painkillers immediately, you're going to pass out and then you need to go into hospital. Okay, so now let's okay. talk about um, hope hope for 
people living with sickle cell disease because there are some people or parents in this period people are still having children and maybe one just finds out now or someone just found out that their child or their partner because some people didn't even know about their uh, you know people just finding out that they're living with sickle cell disease please share some hope for us um so i would like to tell any parents or any warrior that is looking at this that there is hope it is not the end of the road so if you've just found out that your child has sickle cell or if you've just if you're just finding out yourself some people find out as teenagers the first thing i always advise is to register at a hematology clinic if you go to all the general hospitals um wherever you are in nigeria or wherever you are in, anywhere in the world or uh, everywhere you have um hospitals um you would have hematology teams so you register with them and you begin to attend the clinics I know a lot of us, especially in Nigeria, struggle with going to the clinics or they say the hospital is too crowded or they don't attend to us on time. But I tell people that my, my mom found out when I was two and that was when she registered me at Luth. And I've been going there religiously. I didn't used to miss my clinic. So it's very important that um, routine checks are a part of sickle cell because it can't be the difference between living an elderly life with the condition and living without. Why do I say so? There are times I've gone to the hospital feeling perfectly fine. But they've taken my pulse, checked my blood pressure, and they discovered that something was irregular. And we were able to discover something that was going to happen. Imagine if I missed that clinic, you know, I probably would have just um, broken down without even knowing. So it's important that you go to the clinic. The doctors are there to help you. They will tell you to run some tests. And if you go gradually, you know, you can manage the condition. The truth is that a lot of people present late to hospitals. That's why some of these complications seem out of hand. You know, you have a pain in your hip for so long, you keep treating it at home. You don't go to the hospital, you don't do an x-ray, you don't let them check what is wrong. So I, I strongly believe in, number one, registering in a good hematology clinic. Um, number two, taking all your routine drugs as I went due and as advised by the doctor. Number three, presenting early to the hospital and doing all your tests when the doctor advises. Don't let it get out of hand. You know, your body is like a car. If your car is making one funny noise today, and you don't take it for servicing, and you drive it for the next two weeks, the noise will get louder. And before you know it, one day it will knock on Third Mainland Bridge. But if you had attended to it the first time, you could have saved yourself a lot of stress and money. That's how sickle cell is. There is hope. Also, um, there are a lot of um, support network for parents, for warriors, you know, that you can join. So you know that you are not alone. One thing I found out is people feel lonely. Sickle cell is a condition that can make you lonely. And if you're not careful, it would affect your mental health so that's why people like us are speaking and that you know what there's nothing you're going through that is peculiar to you if you've got leg ulcers there are people that have gone through leg ulcers successfully if you have avn there are people that have gone through it so you have to join support network so that you can see like-minded people that can give you that emotional support when you need it finally we have so many there are medications now that you can use to manage the condition for children you can now do transcranial dopplers which can detect if that child is going to have a stroke um stroke is something that affects children with sick so if you do that check earlier you know the child is prone to stroke they begin to treat also for adults you have drugs like hydrosuria i'm on it myself you have things like uh, exchange blood transfusion i've done it a couple of times um you have there are two new drugs now that have just been discovered in america we don't know when it will get to nigeria because right now it is very expensive but we hope that in a couple of years, the price will go down and we'll be able to access it in Nigeria. So every day the technology is improving. There are more tests coming out. There are more drugs coming out. There's so much, there's so many ways to manage the condition. So don't ever feel that there is no hope. There is hope for you. All right. I have uh, two more questions, I think, and I'm done with this. You mentioned uh, some of the alternatives. Okay, no, before we go that, let's talk about routine checkups. You talked about routine checkups. How regularly should people living with sickle cell go for a checkup? Um, so that would depend on your current state of health. And um, so when you just register, sometimes they tell you come every two weeks because the doctors would uh, give you a test to do. And so by the time you're coming, the result is um, ready. Um, but there were times when my checkup was once every four months. So I could go January, it would go next with April, you know. But when I'm not feeling well, they could say come every, every one month or every two weeks. So it basically depends on how you feel. So if the doctors feel that, You've been stable, they give you a long appointment, like four months' time. But they tell you if anything happens before then, 
present to hospital. So it really depends on your state of health. You won't always have the two weekly appointments and you won't always have the four month monthly appointments. It depends on how you feel presently or at that time. Okay. Then also, what is the role of um, genotype in relationships and marriages in relation to sickle cell? And how important is it for people to check their genotype? Uh, very important. We can't, um, we can't stop saying it. Um, sickle cell can only be stopped if we stop giving birth to children with sickle cell. And that would only happen if people check their genotypes. Yes, we do have one or two odd cases where people have been given the wrong results, where a couple would go to test and they would say they are both AA or they are both um, one is AA, one is AS, but the one actually was AS. So we have a few error results like that. But I've, I've, had a, I've had an error result as well in my result. genotype. Yeah, so, yeah, there are cases like that. But aside to that, it is important to check that's because that is the only way you can spare your children and then we tell people what, what, what we advise is that if you're incompatible you then need to seek medical professional genetic counseling it's not the end of the road for some people you know there are so many other options available but you have to understand that nigeria has a high burden of sickle cell and because of that we automatically have a high number of carriers those are people with the AS. And so why AS is looking for AA, SS is also looking for AA. And so what can we do? So if you're incompatible, seek professional genetic counseling, but you must know your genotype before you get into any relationship or marriage to save your children the things of the future. Would you also say and that to prevent, okay. Children yourself, because if your child has sickle cell, trust me, you yourself, you'll be affected. Okay, would you also say that to prevent the wrongful testing results, people should have like multiple testing to Definitely. confirm? Definitely. What, what I um, advise is go to a reputable laboratory, a government approved, a, little, um, a reputable one basically. You might be spending a, a little bit more than, than what other bad person is spending in a small laboratory, but it's better. And then to avoid stories that touch, just have like two or three tests to be sure to confirm that yes, indeed what they're giving you is your true genotype. All right. Finally, is there a total cure for sickle, you know, sickle cell disease that can make you from SS one day to become AA? We've heard of stem cell, cell, stem cell transplant. Um, is that an option and how available is it? How readily available is it? Um, so right now we have three um, cures. Yeah. yeah, we have the bone marrow transplant, which is the first one. Um, so basically they transplanted the bone marrow from somebody that is AA or somebody that is AS. Now your own, um, then they put in your uh, your bone marrow, and then your your bone marrow begins to produce that blood. So if you've been given AA, AA, but the truth is that even a bone marrow transplant doesn't stop you from passing it to your kids if you and your partner are still incompatible. Um, I don't know how to explain the science behind the box. You know, if you want to go into details, that, that that's there. They also have the stem cell, which is um, an improvement of the bone marrow. It's not as rigorous. As the bone marrow transplant, because bone marrow involves a lot of chemotherapy and a lot of things. Um, stem cell is a bit less rigorous and it's also a cure. And finally, we have the one that the newest one, which is called the gene therapy. Um, it's still in trial phase, to be honest, but so far they've been able to cure one person with sickle cell and two people with thalassemia of it, or the gene therapy. So um, people are still entering the trial and then um, they are just going to try to perfect it. So that then we'll have three options for those that can afford it and that really want to go for it. We'll have when three when you say those that can afford it, how, how expensive is it? Um, we don't do any of this in Nigeria only. Wow. We've only done the bone marrow transplant. That was years ago. Um, you probably need to travel abroad um, and um, make um, um, consultations. But if you, if anybody is interested, if you reach SCARF, SCARF has a, um, a partnership or um, a relationship with some hospitals that they can refer you to and then you can get the details of what it costs. Alternatively, you may be able to enter into a trial, which is another good way people get this treatment for free, basically. But you would be responsible for your traveling and your um, accommodation and everything during the process, but the, the therapy itself will be free. So I always tell people that you can try and get into a trial. Maybe that would be a bit cheaper. But I can't really put a price to it right now. Okay, you know no, me? that's okay. That's okay. I think it would be unfair for us to have a conversation about sickle cell and World Sickle Cell Day without at least touching on the importance of blood donation. We had the founder of 
uh, Scarf, uh, Buki joining us some days ago to talk about, on the 15th of June actually, a day after World Blood Donor Day, to talk about the importance of blood donation. Now, from being a sickle cell, you, you are a sickle cell warrior and advocate. How important is it for people to donate blood? And what, what you know, how important is it in the fight against sickle cell? Uh, very important, um, only very important because um, um, it gets to a stage where um, sometimes you need what is called called that exchange blood transfusion, or some people call it red cell exchange. If you have repeated crisis, if your sickling percentage is very high, and in some cases, if you have acute chest syndrome, that's basically in layman's language, the crisis of the chest and when the lungs are affected. Or for the male um, warriors, if you have repeated preaprism, um, preaprism is um, um, sustained penile erection without any arousal. So it's a, it's a complication of sickle cell. So in those instances, they may need to reduce the sickling of the blood. Then they take out your blood and put in fresh blood, sometimes as much as eight to 10 pints every time. So imagine if I need eight pints and people are not donating voluntarily. A lot of times you have to buy the blood, you have to cadre your family members. So we cannot say it enough. Please, please, please give blood voluntarily. The benefits of giving blood are immense. You know, I always tell people that just check it up, even if not for the fact that you're helping someone. Just check up what giving blood is doing to you yourself. It prevents the risk of some cancers. It gives you um, better cardiac health, so many things. And then you are saving lives. That is the most important. You know, there are times I've needed blood in emergency situations. What if somebody didn't donate? So I want to appeal to everybody watching, please, if you can't give blood voluntarily, please sign up to be a blood donor. Thank you so much for joining us, Oyeshala Oni. Uh, the people that are watching now and want to be a part of the work that you do at uh, you, uh, Sickle Cell Aid Foundation, please, how can they reach out? Um, so we are active on social media. Just search for us on Scarf Nigeria. Um, also on Twitter and on Instagram. We're also on Facebook. And if you want to reach me personally, just search for Sickle Cell Convos, but Scarf Nigeria, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, somebody would reply your DM, your message. All right, so Scarf Nigeria on all social media platforms for the Sickle Cell yes. Aid Foundation. And for you, Sickle Cell Convos on all social media yes. platforms. Yes. All right, thank you very much for joining us. Thank um, you. Yes, we wish you all the best. We have been speaking with Oyeshala Oni, who is a sickle cell warrior and advocate. Uh, and she uh, came as a representative, not just of the Sickle Cell Aid Foundation, but also speaking on behalf of Sickle Cell Convos. You can reach out on all our social media platforms. And if you'd like to ask, ask questions or be a part of conversations about sickle cell, amplifying their voices, ensuring that you encourage people to volunteer their blood, donate more blood, and ensure that we have, you know, they often have events, free genotype testing and free uh, blood drives. Please keep up to date with all their information on social media. The least we can do, you know, is to be better, to leave this world better than we met it. And what better way than service to humanity?